Welcome back to The Morning Drive, where we are combining the great praise and worship of WLGS with the reading and teaching of God's Word each Monday through Friday from 5 to 9.30 a.m. It is such a blessing to be with you. I'm Pastor John Pinnell, the pastor of Calvary Chapel of Lake Villa, and your host on this portion of The Morning Drive. It is time for our devotional. Today we're looking at Mark's Gospel, Chapter 4. I titled this devotional, Peace Be Still. Verses 1 and 2, it says, And he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat, and he sat on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. And he taught them by many things, by parables, and said to them in his teaching. So for about a year and a half, Jesus had been teaching the truths of God's word plainly, but there was a transition that took place when the religious rulers of Israel rejected Jesus. Jesus began teaching the people by using parables. The first parable, found in verses 3 through 9, the parable of the sower. Jesus said in verse 3, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. So here in the parable of a sower, the sower, although not identified, refers to God and all those who share his word. The word is the seed. And the types of soil, four are given to us. The wayside soil is a hard-packed soil where the seed doesn't take root because the birds come and snatch it away. The stony soil is a soil that is so filled with stones that although the seed takes root, the sun comes and dries it out before it can actually have a chance to grow and produce fruit. The thorny soil, it seems to be real good soil, but as the plant begins to grow, so does the weeds and the thorns, and they choke out the plant to keep it from bearing fruit. And then, of course, the fourth soil type is the good soil, and this is the only one that produces fruit. Jesus said of this soil in verse 20 that this soil is those who hear the word of God, accept it. They bear fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. I hope that's what we would desire to do, to hear God's word and to bear fruit. In verses 10 through 20, we find that when Jesus was with his disciples later on that evening. They asked him about his change in teaching style. And he said to them, verse 11, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So he explained that there is this transition, but you have me to explain these mysteries to you. Later on, the Holy Spirit would help to explain the mysteries to them. And to this day, we have the Holy Spirit as our teacher and as our guide to all truths. In verses 21 through 25, Jesus talks about a lamp. He says in verse 21, Is a lamp to be brought to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set on a lampstand? So Jesus next teaches just as a lamp is set on a lampstand to reveal all that's in the room. We are not to hide the light of God's word. Jesus called us, his followers, the light of the world in Matthew 5, 14. But in reality, John tells us in John 1, 9, that Jesus is the true light that gives light to every man coming into the world. And in his light, well, Mark tells us in verse 22, there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor anything kept secret that should not come to light. This is both frightful and awesome to contemplate. Bottom line, we are each responsible to use the light that we have been given for, as Jesus said in verse 24, for with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. In verses 26 through 29, we find Jesus saying, verse 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, verse 27, and should sleep by night and rise by day. The seed should sprout and grow, and he himself does not know how. There's something in the Bible that the theologians like to call expositional consistency. 
It means when something is introduced in Scripture, uh, that theme uh, will remain consistent throughout the Bible. Like with the parable of the sower, we learn that God is the sower and the seed is his word. Here we find that we have the parable of the growing seed. God sows the seed, his word. It first um, is sowed, it takes root, it grows, first the blade, then the head, and then the fruit comes. And it reminds us that the Holy Spirit takes time to produce fruit in the life of a believer. I think this is so important for us to understand that God, as long as you're seeking his face, he's working to make you a fruitful follower of Christ. Well, in verses 30 through 34, Jesus speaks about the parable of a mustard seed. He says, verse 30 and 31, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed. He goes on to talk about the smallest of all seeds being planted and growing into a large tree, a tree large enough to give a, a home to birds. Now, there's two basic interpretations of this parable. One teaches that the church, although very small in the beginning, will eventually grow until all the earth believes. The second, which I believe is more likely, teaches that as the church grows and comes into maturity, so the birds, which expositional consistency relates to Satan, unbelievers, the birds nest under its shade. And in the church today, we find both believers and unbelievers. Well, you want the unbelievers there because there is the hope that they might hear the gospel and be saved. But it's also a warning to us that there might be unbelievers in our midst. Well, the chapter closes with Jesus telling the disciples to get in a boat. Let's go to the other side. And they're there on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the Ga Sea of Galilee is one of the, it is the largest freshwater lake in Israel, 13 miles long, 8 miles wide, but it's not very deep. And there's two high mountains that surround it that can cause very violent storms to come upon it. During one of these great storms, with Jesus sleeping in the stern of the boat, the disciples were freaked out and afraid, and they called to Jesus, and he stood and he rebuked the winds and he said, peace be still. And then he rebuked his disciples for their little faith. You know, we'll all go through storms in this life. Sometimes storms will come in our disobedience to the Lord. At other times they'll come in our obedience. We must always remember that Jesus promises to be with us in the midst of these storms and only Jesus can say, peace be still and bring great calm over our lives. Father, thank you for your word and for what it teaches us. And may we know your peace, Lord, especially those who may be in the middle of a storm. May they know your peace this day, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.